we have just begun the season of Advent, those four weeks that the Church gives us to prepare for the coming of Jesus at Christmas. And there's perhaps many ways that we can live Lent, uh, Advent, rather, and many things that we can do during the course of Advent. But rather than looking at perhaps sacred scripture, I thought that we could look at some of the key symbols of Advent. Advent is a very symbolic time. Our first, our faith immerses itself in symbols. And the four perhaps best known of these symbols are these. The Christmas tree, the Advent wreath, the crib, and Christmas gifts. Now, symbols are, are so important to our faith. Think of symbols such as candles, vestments, gestures, colors, objects. These things are very important for us because they give us a glimpse into a mystery. It's like almost looking through a keyhole into a room where you see so much and yet at the same time you know that you don't see the whole room. You're just getting this glimpse. And that's all symbols do and that's all they try to do. They don't try to exhaust the mystery because that's impossible. But just to give us some keyhole glimpse into the mystery. And that's what these Advent symbols do for us, in fact, in different, very different ways. But they are a language speaking to us, unveiling to some degree, some slight degree, something about the mystery that we are looking at. So we're going to begin today with that symbol of the Christmas tree. I must say, I've always loved the Christmas tree with its delightful flickering lights and colors, even the smell, of course. It just fills up your senses. Though sometimes people get a little bit nervous about Christmas trees because they say, well, they come from the pagans and they had a, a symbolic value in the pagan world. But that really doesn't mean very much because the pagans too desired eternal life and intuited that we must somehow live forever without knowing how that is. And it was very natural for them, especially those in the northern climes in Scandinavia and the north of Germany and so on. It was very, very natural for them to see, kind of intuit in the, the tree, the evergreen tree, a symbol of that life that was unaffected by the death of winter when everything is dark and cold and, and apparently dead. And so it seemed quite natural to them that the, the evergreen tree symbolized something that they themselves deeply desired, and that was not to pass out of existence, but to, to live forever, eternal life. And so for us, it's quite natural that we would take up that, in one way or another, take up that symbol. We too desire eternal life. But we have a much stronger hope, of course. And this hope we symbolize with the evergreen tree. While everything around may be dead and dark and fruitless, that Christmas tree, which, well, there's different traditions, but uh, standard tradition is at the very beginning of Advent, we, we prepare a Christmas tree. And, and when it's prepared, of course, the, the, sim the, the symbolism is very clear. The tree is green, alive. We have a real tree, not a plastic one. It's full of light, those twinkly lights and the glistening tinsel, and even producing little fruits. It was a, a tradition, perhaps more in the past, to hang little, little fruits and little sweets onto the branches of the Christmas tree. Of course, now those fruits perhaps are the wrapped gifts beneath the, the tree, but they're very fruitful. And so in the same way, our hope is in God's love for each one of us. That despite the winter of our spiritual lives, our sinfulness, God does not abandon us. He personally wishes to enter into this world, this world that in many ways we make such a mess of, which is the world around us. We say war and strife and corruption. And, and we would be forgiven for thinking God just wants to wash his hands of this mess of a world, but not, not at all. 
and and also when we think of a bit of a mess of a world of our own spiritual lives, our own interior world, that we might feel that this is the last place that God wishes to be. But we are filled with this great hope and joy because of Christmas, knowing that God personally wants to enter into this otherwise dark, cold world. This is beautifully described in the Book of Wisdom. And it describes, it's a, it's a foretelling of, the, of Christmas. For while gentle silence enveloped all things, and night in its swift course was now half gone, thy all-powerful word leaped from heaven, from the royal throne, into the midst of the land that was doomed. This land that was doomed, that we would lose hope in that we would despair of the world around us, again, our, our own soul. We would despair of this, except that we see that God, the Son of God, has wanted to leap from his all-powerful, this throne, the royal throne, the all-powerful word, leaping from heaven into this world, saying to us, I will not abandon you. I will not leave you in a perpetual winter. Now I come into your heart like that Christmas tree in, in our houses, in our living rooms, filling it with light, with, with beauty, with kind of dazzling cheerfulness even. And so the coming of Christ into our souls does the same thing. So long live the Christmas tree. It's a wonderful symbol. I give you thanks, my God, for the good resolutions, affections, and inspirations you have communicated to me in this meditation. I ask you for help to put them into effect. My Mother Immaculate, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me.